All right, welcome to the weekend video. This is Ender here. It's bullwaves.org. And if you like what I do, check out bullwaves.org and uh, become a member. I'll see you nightly for nightly Elliott Wave updates. Right, uh, let's get into the markets. It's been, um, it always is, pretty interesting week um, so far. And I think we are moving along in the patterns quite well. And uh, I will show you what I think is going to happen next week. Okay, we'll start with the dollar FX. This is Euro dollar. And obviously, if you're new here, I'm going to be looking at this from an Elliott Wave perspective with a little, a little bit of technical analysis thrown in, um, but mostly from an uh, wave counts, Elliott Wave perspective. That's what I do. Okay, so uh, Euro dollar. Here's the hourly count. I'll, show, I'll go to the four hour count and show you what I'm thinking. I'm thinking now an ending diagonal. It's a C wave decline, I think. Uh, today's action has really fallen back in favor of that idea again. Um, I'm thinking a an ending diagonal possibility for uh, wave C in green here, complete wave two. So um, I'm still looking towards about 105. Uh, that's the previous fourth wave high. I'm looking about 105 to complete uh, wave C of two. So we've got you know three down in one, three up in two, three down in three is what we're working on right now. Um, Pretty choppy action over the last few weeks in general pretty sideways to be honest um so we've got possible three down in a three up in b and then we, we look for five ways down in wave c and wave c should complete wave three and i'm looking at about 106 106.50 or something for that excuse me excuse me while i drink um settle in get yourself a cup of coffee uh, this is going to be a long one. Okay, so five waves down in wave C is what we're looking for. About 106.50 maybe to complete. And then three waves up in wave four then over the following week. So I think at least the first half of next week should be taken up by the C wave and we'll see how we go. Um, today's decline, I'm not sure if we can label wave one at today's low and wave two is coming. Or if we've already got wave one and two done and this is the beginning of wave three. We should know early on. Well, we should probably know by tonight, to be honest. If this continues lower, then wave three is underway. Uh, okay, let's move on. This is cable. As you can see, we've come down off the um, 131 high, and we are now down at about 126. So, quarter points so far. We're back at the previous fourth or previous wave three high, previous internal fourth wave low. So, um, we're probably. If we break solidly through this, that, that means we're breaking through an um, initial uh, support. And you can see that support area, that, that 126 level, acted as support for three um, three separate uh, lows within the pattern. So, you know, we have got a head and shoulders forming here also. So, uh, you know, there's something brewing here. What I think is brewing is wave one down. And again, I'm looking at a possible leading wedge slightly different than ending diagonal but a leading wedge pattern in wave one so we've got wave uh wave four done wave one two three four five left to go in wave five of one this can be viewed a couple of different ways you can also go one two one two one two and you know maybe we'll see an acceleration lower into wave three so in terms of the short-term pattern it's probably the same because we're we're looking for a, a decline acceleration lower in wave three anyway so um, the semantics there don't necessarily matter so we've got a, a corrective lower high in wave two and at least today we are beginning to extend lower and we've retraced most of that previous rally so we'll see how this works out it could also be a larger wave two rally um, again you know we don't actually know the future but <laughs> How nice it would be. Well, certain things we know in the future. We know certain things, you know. Uh, but what's going to happen tomorrow on the markets is, is one thing that's beyond me right now. Or, sorry, Monday. Um, so, probability-wise, it looks like we're heading down into wave three of five of one. And next week, we should probably complete wave one overall. Okay. Dolly N, we were looking at this uh, corrective pattern off the top. Um, it looked like... Uh, a possible third fourth or sorry third fourth fifth and then a fourth and then we head higher in wave five again and that's what i'm uh i think today's action has pretty much confirmed that idea now 
So we've had, it, it's kind of like an, an opposite. You know, we've had a, a third wave high, which acted as a, let me get a zoom in there a little bit. This third wave high acted as a triple support here. And then we've bounced higher again. So it looks like we've, um, we've pretty much, uh, if not confirmed, but we've, we've pretty much, um, signaled today that, uh, wave five, uh, Wave five of three is now underway. And wave five of three, at least, at a minimum, should break above 147.40. Uh, but it would probably go... I would be, you know, happier to see it go up above, you know, 148. Uh, somewhere to complete wave five of three. And then again, another correction and then another rally. So, you know, overall, it's probably going to um, oscillate around 146, 147 over the, the next few weeks. As we complete fourth wave, fifth wave, fourth wave, fifth wave, you know. Um, this week's action was pretty good. It, it, we initially came down to wave A. We traced down a triangle B wave, and we 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 uh, fell into uh, the previous fourth wave low, which was the initial target 144.56, and then we bounced pretty well today. So uh, so far so good. It looks like wave five is now uh, beginning. So that'll be wave one and two should complete a higher low by Monday, and then we. Uh, accelerate higher uh, again by um, midweek. Okay, let's move on. Okay, the Dow. Um, it was an, ex an extended correction higher, or an extended move higher anyway. Um, God only knows what it was based on, to be quite honest. But for the moment, we've had a you know we have a left shoulder, we have a head pattern, we have a right shoulder building, and I think this will. Um, this will end up with a decline back into a new trend, a new downtrend uh, later on in the month. Uh, today's the first of well, first of September today. Who would have thunk it? Uh, well, here we are. So we've got a possible second wave top in place this week, um, and we had an initial, you know, we had a tag of that 62% retracement level um, yesterday, and then we came down reasonably impulsively off that level. Uh, a possible second wave lower high today and heading down into a third wave of wave one. So we should look for five waves down again, more or less a full retracement of the previous wave C rally, or sorry, wave C rally. Um, so at a minimum, I'm looking for about 34, 40 uh, for this wave one down to complete. But, you know, the lower it goes, the better, to be quite honest. Um, so five waves down. To begin a new impulsive pattern in wave three and we'll see how that goes over the next week or so uh, okay gold um i'm sticking with the original pattern a so wave one and two of c so we've got a lower high uh, momentum is pretty much reversed now at this point on the four hour count and on the hourly count so you can see that we're, we're turning lower almost a breakthrough of the uh of the central line there on rsi um so, or sorry, on MACD. So, I think, well, today's action has kind of turned impulsively to the downside again. So, we could have the beginning of a wave one and two down. So, that would be, that would begin wave one and two. So, one, two, <laughs> one, two. Uh, this would be the overall, the start of a third wave decline. So, sometime by... Well, before the end of next week, anyway, we'd look for a wave one and two complete retraceable retracement of the C wave rally. So, break of nineteen oh, a break of nineteen hundred again uh, in wave one, wave two lower high, and then an acceleration lower in wave three. So, I haven't ruled out the alternate count here, but for the moment, we can stick with the um, main wave count. Okay, let me get a drink again before we move on. It's actually moving quicker than I thought it would. Which is always good and um, like i said if you enjoy seeing these charts and watching the progression of elliott waves um and you can you think you can use them in your um investing and your trading be sure to get over to bullwaves.org and check out uh, the membership offers okay that was a big hard sell there wasn't it um three waves up done possible top in wave two at the 62 percent retracement and we've turned lower reasonably impulsively today so we'll see whether wave one continues down in five waves early next week okay let's get to crude oil we're following this fifth wave up and that 
pretty much, you know, it was touch and go earlier on in the week, but uh, I think by Wednesday evening, we pretty much had a, a lock on this fifth wave rally. Um, so we've got uh, one, two, three, four, wave five to complete wave C is pretty much pretty close to being done now. Uh, we'll go to the hourly count and we'll show you what I'm thinking there. Uh, we can actually get rid of this alternate count now because we have a new high today. So we broke out to a new high. That's wave three, um, wave five confirmed anyway. Um, we'll see how much higher it actually goes from here. But uh, I was counting this rally this week in wave three of three of five. So it looks like we've got a little bit of sideways action next week in wave three to complete wave three blue and to complete wave four blue and then we just spike higher in wave five and then reverse again so it'll be a little bit behind crude oil will be a little bit behind the stock market but once the stock market does start thundering lower i think crude oil is going to follow it um there's no doubt about that so we had three waves down in wave four complete we were looking for a new um high above 85 somewhere in wave five and that seems to be what we've we've got so far uh, so far, so good. I think we'll complete this fifth wave rally next week sometime, and then we'll reverse pretty hard. That'll complete wave C and wave four, and then we'll reverse uh, pretty hard into wave five down. Okay, let's get into the S&P. Okay, not as much of a fall in the S&P today, but we do have a solid three wave pattern higher to a lower high. Uh, if you go on the hourly count here, you can see uh, this week's high or today's high has pushed close towards uh, that 78.6 retracement um so far we're kind of rejecting that but to be honest this trade is pretty flat today so far it's uh it's coming up on five o'clock here so it's probably lunchtime in the us or in the sorry in uh, new york so i wouldn't expect a whole lot after lunch in terms of bandwidth of trading here but uh, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe we'll get a cycle uh, that way very low. If we did, if we fall back towards that uh, forty-four seventy-four level, that'll be a reasonable um, initial signal to begin, or to signal that that wave two is actually popped out and we're turning lower into wave one of three. Um, you can see we have had a three up in wave A, three down in B. I was pretty um, hopeful that this was the initial impulsive move to begin with three down but that didn't materialize this week so we've got three up in a three down in b and then one two three probably into yesterday's high some sort of an expanded flat correction wave four a spike to a new high maybe in wave five um interesting pattern it looks like we've got a three three five complete and a flat correction we're reversing off 78 six retracement right now three waves up let's see if we can uh initiate a new trend move lower in wave three next week uh let's go bitcoin i think no silver okay uh this is the alternate account actually in silver so we've got a possible wave two complete this is one to keep on the back of your mind really um the rally off the recent lows has been in wave one we should expect a, a higher low to build Somewhere around twenty-three dollars, um, maybe below that, maybe twenty-two fifty. Who knows? Um, in wave two next week, and then we we'll turn higher again in wave three. So this will be wave three of three. It should be a pretty powerful one if this alternate count is correct. Now let's go back to the main count. Um, uh, wave one decline, wave two up, um, and at least today we have a signal of a reversal pattern on the card. So um, I'm going to ask a little bit more of silver before i start nailing colors to the mast here but a break of 23 a solid impulsive break of 23 dollars again will 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 swing this um pattern back in favor of the bearish count okay let's go bitcoin um uh, yeah we've got a fourth wave with five of c of four complete at where were we you know 31 31 800 call it um and now Now we have a possible five wave pattern lower coming into view. So this could be the beginning of a uh, a very large fifth wave down. And that would be the kind of overriding pattern here, I think. On the hourly count, you can see that we had that's, you know, 
lunatic um, knee-jerk rally uh, to complete wave C of four earlier on in the week. And then now we've got a nice five-wave pattern moving lower, has has retraced the previous wave C rally. So, um, you know, sayonara, there goes that uh, possibility uh, of a um, bullish rally, or a bullish, let's say, reversal off the lows. But um, it looks like a pretty solid three waves up in wave four now. And then we're looking at beginning wave five down. Again, there's a couple of alternates here. This could be a larger degree wave one and two, and we're beginning a third wave down. So keep that in mind uh, for Bitcoin. Uh, in terms of the longer term count, wave five in blue here, I think initially we should, it should be 14, you know, 14,000, but I think we will probably, you know, there's every chance that we fill this trend channel here. So we could, we could go back down below 5,000. Um, if this wave five down does actually really, you know, pummel this market, and it, it really does have the potential to do that, so watch out. Uh, the Nasdaq. Let's see, am I still recording? I am. Nasdaq again tagged the seventy eight six retracement today in wave two. Um, the momentum to the upside has been waning pretty badly this week. Although we've made kind of successive new highs, very slight new highs, uh, we've retraced most of this week's, um, no, sorry, retraced a, uh, yesterday's rally anyway. So um, it remains to be seen. Do we uh, reverse much like um, the other stock markets? Does this market go down too? I think so. It's a pretty solid three waves up to a lower high, 78.6 retracement. I know it's still quite, you know, it's quite tight here. Um, I am, you know, I'm risking it here, to be honest. But uh, we've got a nice pattern. We've got a, f a rejection at a FIB level. Um, all we need now is like a, an impulsive lower high to build from here. And then we should probably be, we should be able to confirm wave three down off, um, off a lower high form next week. And I think... That is that, and we are done. That was quicker than I expected. Um, as always, I give you the good news in the market, or the bad news in the markets, more or less, these days. And I give you the good news of eternity. Uh, eternity is a simple matter. I think last week I said, to just think for a moment, reason for a moment. God is a God of reason. The true living God is a God of reason. So reason for a moment. Where do you think you got millions of, you know, light receptors in your eyes? Where do you think you got the ability to uh, move, talk, walk, think? Did you just emerge from a pile of sludge? You know, in a primordial you know, cat catastrophic earth? Did everything erupt from nothing, which is actually scientifically po impossible? Everything cannot come from nothing. You know, you break every law of thermodynamics there, so you do. <laughs> First of all, everything cannot come from nothing. Woo! Just knocked half my table off there. So, we have the ability to think, the ability to reason, the ability to sin, the ability to do evil. That in itself, you know, people say, well, why, if we have, if, if there is a God, why does he allow evil? Well, let me reason with you. God is a God of love. He cannot abide by sin. But he does. He does love you. And he wants you to love him. He created you. He's a loving father. Now, if he programmed you to automatically be subservient to him and to love him, would that be love? Or would it just be a program running? You see, love is the willingness, the willingness to forego, you know, the betterment of yourself for the betterment of others. That is love. Like Jesus said, there's no better 
uh, there's no greater love than t to lay down your life for your friends, and which he did, which is what he did, by the way. But God requires your, he wants you your love. And that cannot happen through a program, through a preordained program. So he, he inbuilt us with free will. And you have the free will to love God, or you have the free will to walk away and leave God behind. I would caution against that because you're heading into eternity then without God. Reason with me for a minute. Were you there during the sin of Adam and Eve? Did you pick from the tree of knowledge of good and evil and eat? No, you did not. But we suffer the consequences of that sin. We were, kick, we were kicked out of perfection. And then we went straight into imperfection and death through the sin of our forefathers. And just like you had nothing to do with you had nothing to do with the action of that sin, you also have nothing to do with the thing that re that repaired that sin, that paid for sin. Jesus did it. What you have to do is accept it. You have to turn from your sin. You have to admit that you're a sinner and you need a savior. And you have to believe God. See it there. Believe that Jesus is God's son. Believe what God did for you. He paid for your sin on the cross. And you have to say, I believe that, Lord. Father in heaven, I believe that. And Jesus said, or Paul said, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. So you believe what God did for you. To fix the sin problem. And that's what he did on the cross. That's what he was always going to do. Go read, this, just go read the Tanakh. Go read the Old Testament. You'll see it everywhere. You'll see it in Abraham and Isaac. You'll see it in Samson. You know, taking the doors from um, Gath. And going up to the top of the mountain. And putting the posts in the top of the mountain. <laughs> you know, the, uh, the hints are everywhere of what was going to happen. Uh, read Isaiah 53, and you'll see it exactly. See, read Psalm 22. Anyway, it's all there for you. I think I've um, done my piece. I have reasoned with you, and now it's up to you. So, thank God, another week is done. I'll be back tonight for the nightly update, and if you have listened until this point, I am talking to you. So, um, do something about it. Go ask God if it's true or not. Um. Until tonight, go join the website. I'll see you there. Uh, if you don't, I'll see you here next week, if I'm still around. Bye-bye.